Hello, everyone. Welcome to our ARG movement uh, powered by Directing. I'm Elvira Rakova, and today we're starting the series of our interviews with experts in compressed air and pneumatics. I'm very happy to have here um, my colleague and a friend, Matteo Martinelli, well, Dr. Matteo Martinelli. He is one of the few people that has a PhD in compressed air systems. So this is where we, <laughs> this is how we found each other, those were people that have pitched in compressed air systems. And um, uh, Matteo is based in Italy and uh, I'm very happy to have you here. So Matteo, could you please tell us a couple of words about yourself? Yes, uh, obviously. Uh, first of all, thank you, Elvira. I'm very honored to be here and to speak about these topics uh, with, uh, with you. Uh, as you told, uh, I'm based in, in Italy, especially in Turin. Uh, I founded my, my, my <laughs> little universe uh, in pneumatics uh, uh, 11 years ago. Uh, I have a PhD in, in mechanics and in pneumatics, and this is the reason uh, that uh, um, I decided to, to found something uh, pragmatical in these topics, because if you study pneumatics, uh, you know very well how the, um, the things happen in fluid, but uh, the real um, goal is to translate this idea and this phenomena in something uh, useful uh, for, for industrial sector. So exactly. I, I, I discovered uh, when I was a researcher, that uh, there was a very large gap between the possibility to do something uh, theoretically and the, the difficult about to translate this theory in something practical. And not only because this, this theory produced something difficult to realize, but first of all, because uh, pneumatic sector uh, business in, in general about pneumatics is completely, um, uh, let me say, um, not ready to accept a new technology. Because yes. historically, pneumatics in industrial sectors are based in something that people understood like uh, easy, simple, uh, very low cost, and uh, uh, easy to use. But pneumatics cannot be uh, survive in 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 this period because uh, all is connected, all is smart. Uh, or every every technology that you can find in a machine or in a production line have something um, electrically connected or some uh, artificial intelligence inside. But near that, <laughs> you can find an old cylinder, mm -hmm. uh, 60s from 60s, directly from 60s, used uh, in a wrong way. Uh, mm -hmm. or, or, or you can find a very simple uh, device, an ejector, for example, that produces vacuum, but using compressed air. And yeah. this, this, this is an anachronistic situation. So I, I decided to found SAFE and key 11 years ago to, to try to, to, to drag pneumatics from 60 to, to today, yeah. or maybe and, and this is going to be a topic of us about the pneumatic uh, of today's about, about pneumatics of tomorrow. I uh, completely agree with you about the old technology. And um, I would like just to, I know that this is your interview, but I just want to add two points here that I see in pneumatics during my experience, also around 11 years. So uh, I started it. The first one is, of course, that uh, no one will replace it now by electromechanics because pneumatics is very robust. As you just said, you can find the cylinder in 60s and that it's still working like directly from there. When I worked in the component supplier, it was like working for forever. And um, this is why um, it didn't have so much development 
as a, as a electrics, for example. So because why we need to invent something new while this works, right? Let's do the same way as it works, why, why to improve it? And another way that pneumatics uh, was not designed uh, to reduce energy consumption or to be efficient. So I think that in the head, uh, in general, in the technology, it was not never idea to make it energy efficient. So yeah. to perform some tasks, but to make energy efficient. And uh, my favorite, uh, uh, my favorite joke that is truth, but at the same time is also very sad, is the sizing of cylinders. So that cylinder of 40 millimeters consumes 50% uh, less than cylinder of 50 millimeter diameter under the same pressure. And uh, it, you can just size it correctly, but it, there is no culture of sizing, sizing it correctly. Moreover, the sizing of cylinders come just from the number of Renard number that doesn't make any technical sense. Well, it is good to make it standard, but it doesn't make sense. So uh, you can read also the blog. I'll, I'll have the link here about the sizing of cylinders and how pneumatics is not ready. So please uh, follow this. And I wanted to talk with you about exactly these things that you mentioned. So first of all, why you decided to make it energy efficient 11 years ago? Was it already the topic to make it energy efficient? What was, what was your motivation? Uh, I, I started with an idea, a technical idea. And then if you want to do business, you have to... Uh, discover if this idea can produce money. And at the beginning of 2000s, uh, the, the gold period of the industry was terminated because if you, if, if you take a look to the 80s, for example, nobody cares about efficiency. Uh, the problem was uh, produce, produce more, even more. Uh, but when uh, we had this crisis that all us know very well, uh, the, the, the importance of do the same things that before but better, uh, this is the efficiency uh, starting growing uh, date, I, I think 2000. And when we decided to, to put in the, in the market some technology, uh, we decided to put under the flag efficiency uh, and not power increase performances, for example. Mm -hmm. Efficiency is something that permits you to do the same, but better and save money, save time. Uh, but uh, this is only a consequence because Mm. If you analyze, uh, for example, a cylinder, a simple cylinder that you know very well, um, you that can... That is consumer. So I just wanted yeah. to remind uh, also the listeners here, because we have some energy managers that are uh, not in the topic of the pneumatics. So in the uh, we have a big consumer. So the cylinders, it's nozzles, vacuum applications. So everything that is like on the end opposite end yeah. of your compressor room. And this yeah. is where we should start the reduction and the optimization of this. So you decided to go after big consumers. Yeah. The cylinder. Uh, yes. And maybe this, this, but maybe we can speak more about this decision that we took uh, 10 years ago uh, to do directly on the consumers. So uh, you know that Compressor day system can you can be split in production, distribution, and uh, using of compressor day. So if you if you simple uh, decrease the leakages and you perform the, the way that you produce the air, the only way to get uh, efficiency is uh, decrease the consumption, having the same mechanical energy that you mm -hmm. had before. And cylinders are a family of these cons consumer. Then nozzles, as you told, uh, or, or, uh, or ejector or something others. Uh, but if we, if, if we start uh, from cylinders, uh, I remember that uh, um, uh, I saw that uh, a pneumatic cylinders was used like an oleodynamic cylinders. So 
uh, air is compressible, so is a, a sort of spring. You put inside the air the compressed the, the energy, you transport, and then you have to uh, make this air expanding to get back this energy. But if you see like a cylinder works, it, 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 it's used like a simple oleodynamic cylinder. So thinking about that, we started to develop a technology uh, and we patented also this technology to, to, to permit to the cylinder to, to, to consume less. And mm -hmm. uh, we obtained a very high level of results because we reached, uh, in some cases, 90% of saving of the cylinder. So this means that the cylinders do the same that the, uh, or, um, the, the give you the same uh, mechanical energy, but consuming 90% 90, 90 less of air. Yes, yeah, I want, I want just to have here a short remark also, um, because most of the, let's say students that study compressed air or the studies of compressed air doesn't exist usually at the universities, only in the few one. And uh, when Matteo mentions like the oleodynamic cylinders, basically all the hydraulic cylinders, right, that they're using like the hydraulic oils that with the uncompressible fluids. It doesn't mean that it's a miracle that it saves 90% and it's like very, I mean, it's a sophisticated technology that you develop, but it's not something that unbelievably it's an impossible to create it. The problem is that the physics that is used in pneumatics for all the components that are developed is applied from the hydraulic theory. Yeah. Exactly. And the compressibility, thermodynamics, and those aspects, those academical aspects where you brought into the technology, they're usually not considered because they're developed by people that come from the hydraulic field. If you look there, if you look, frankly speaking, at the biggest uh, component suppliers, so pneumatics is developed by uh, experts in hydraulics. Yeah. And this is why very often and during this energy movement, we will also reveal a lot of interesting things like about the pressure drop calculations or the flow calculations or the measurement of the flow or those things that are actually um, not working in the real world when we compare it. So you saw this as the, an expert, as the you, you understand very good theory and thermodynamics and the compressibility of air that we always need to remember and to develop this technology you basically develop the perfect cylinder for compressed air so this is uh, this is this is what i see yeah yeah yes uh, the, the technology that we develop um is um, is something that uh, destroy the the way that normally uh, a cylinder uh, can be driven uh, and this is very, very difficult to 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 transform the 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 way that normally ninety ninety percent of people uh, think about how to use a cylinder. So you can uh, simply put a five two position valve and drive a cylinder, but you don't know how many normal meter cube per year this cylinder consumes. And if you if you buy a cylinder, so you can spend I don't know seventy euros. But these cylinders um, maybe uh, consumes ten times more of money in one year to move. Mm -hmm. So first, difficult um, try to to um, optimize the technology. Okay, done. But the real difficulty that we had in the past uh, is uh, to demonstrate to the user uh, that this cylinder consumes. And it was so simple. You have to multiply very quickly the, the volume, dot pressure, dot number of cycles. But this um, is not so simple for are users because user is expert in produce something and mm -hmm. if you have to uh, convince something mm -hmm. that is his expert in production that he was using some technology completely uh, wrong uh, or what concerns the energy 
but this technology is used from 60, uh, mm -hmm. he, he, it's impossible that he, he can believe you. So uh, the, the step is to uh, form our potential customer, is to demonstrate then that uh, you can measure the mass flow, you can add a uh, cost of the air, you can know the cost of the air. Mm -hmm. To do this, uh, for what concerns the cylinders, the best way is to speak with uh, machine builders. Yes. But machine builders does not pay the bill of the compressor there. Mm -hmm. So you have to speak with the end users to give them the possibility to save money. But uh, end user cannot uh, uh, modify the machine. Yes. So, mm -hmm. You know, you know very well this aspect because we speak about that so many times. Um, market in general now is quite ready for efficiency in pneumatics, but we, you, me, and others like expert, uh, we have to decide which technology and which way is the best now for the market, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, there are technology, very, very high level technology that can be used in, in industrial sector. But is the sector that maybe is not so ready for these technologies. We, we have to, let me say, help all the industrial sector to follow uh, our technology for the future. Yes, and uh, tell me about this uh, history. So, what happened to this cylinder and th those technologies that you what what way you did find uh, with Safin to integrate them or to optimize to reduce the energy consumption at the end? Because, as you said, it's always the struggle of machine builders that don't pay the bill. And I know it myself as the consultant, as the developer of the software. I I had, I think, zero projects with the machine builders in the last year. So at the beginning, it was some interest, but of course, they understand that it uh, doesn't make so much sense. The cost aspect, right, plays also the role because then the machine will be uh, more expensive, well, a little yeah. bit more expensive. Yes. So those kind of things. So what is the how what happened in your history as the professional in pneumatics since you started and where are you now? I can assume, resume um, in a very easy way because we learned to become uh, um, businessmen and uh, we start to forget who was a technician mm -hmm. because uh, uh, this uh, technology has sense only if uh, you can. Uh, implement this technology in something real so mm -hmm. we started to develop very high level technology but now the business is uh, with technology mm, low level uh, mm -hmm. this is the reason because um, uh, i i told you before that the market is not so ready because uh, it's really not ready to to implement the breakthrough technology in a complex machine. So we start to, uh, let me say, develop some technology uh, more easy to implement, more comprehensible for the, um, for the customer. And we started like um, many people do, do with the leakage detection, with the fixing leakages, with the survey on plants to, to discover if uh, the, the distribution line is well designed or not. And we started to, to use um, our expertise in solving some simple situation like blowing, for example. Blowing is very easy to, 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 to substitute it, to, to make efficient. Uh, mm -hmm. in industrial in this period in, in my opinion because um uh, customer can touch the air uh, if you if you link uh, uh, a cost of the air it can understand that it is not only air but it is 
flowing money to to drive something and 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 in this way we can substitute this uh, this um, this compressor there not well used with something technologically uh, advanced and we we normally um, drag this um, this solution with a cloud connection with a monitoring system uh, in this way um, the technology is not uh, let me say um, forbidden mm -hmm. if you if you install a new technology but uh, uh, if the results is not uh, underlined every day every month for the customer the customer forget that he he ever results in inefficiency so we decide to link all the all our product to a connection cloud and to a monitoring system that can um, always show how efficiency is a respect uh, um, to the to the past okay so basically you started you developed uh very advanced technologies 10 years ago and it was you you saw that market was not ready and that supply chain difficulty also machine builders end users warranties contracts and so on was not allowed so you now you go to the end users so the energy managers in the factories you do the full service so basically it's the holistic approach that is very important you start with the application see how air is used and then you can show that this technology can be used there Yes, exactly. And doing this, uh, the customer um, slowly understand, not so slowly, but understand mm -hmm. uh, the results and uh, um, open to your technology all his problems. Because uh, only if you start to think to something, uh, you understand that maybe you have some other problems that uh, you don't know how to have. So it's a sort of um, um, work in progress that we do with every customer. We start with a little uh, implementation, uh, we show the results and so on. Uh, the technology can um, go through the plans in a very yes. easy way. Yes, I, I want to tell here one point because we worked with you in, in a few projects together and been like on the factories that, um, very often energy managers or maintenance managers consider this from our side or from side of other auditors or people uh, that come uh, as the critics of the that you tell and say this is like here is the problem here is the problem right like that we're kind of optimize it somehow and um, in my perspective what I see and I wanted to ask your opinion about it and what I, what I realized that um, it's not the fault of maintenance of energy manager. It's again, the evolution of pneumatic or I don't know, not evolution, the opposite <laughs> degradation, of, degradation of pneumatics and compressed air because uh, there is just, a, there is no education on that. Uh, the energy managers are not tra trained to understand where is the consumer, where is like something else. And uh, the way that pneumatic system, compressed air system been designed for years, the technology they've been used for years, those cylinders that you mentioned uh, 60, from 60 years ago that have been for, for years on the machines, now it just exists a new way with the experts that come from academia, that uh, know the physics, that understand, uh, that's been in the lab, that is very important, that this is criticism that I got myself, like, ah, you just worked in the lab, what you understand from the real world. But I think this is the strength of the... Of, of experts that come from the academia and then they understand the industrial needs also. So, um, and in this way, you can motivate uh, people by telling them this is just a new way, new way that you gain more information on this and uh, you can optimize it. So, but it doesn't mean that you did something wrong because very often what we see that they bought a new efficient component and then the system doesn't work. So, so something happened simply just because we need to see the full system, what have all the components after this. So what is, in your opinion, how we can um, more on the personal level motivate uh, people to go into the application and not be afraid of changes just 
fixing the leakage, but be more brave and like take this risk on the putting a new technology. Uh, I machine. think that um, even if there's no diffused culture in pneumatics in industrial sectors, uh, you found, I found, I find very often very smart people in the industrial sector. And uh, if you start to speak about these people that ignore some um, physics in pneumatics, but if you speak to these uh, people about this problem, they understood very well and very quickly. So what we can do is uh, to speak very uh, clear to smart people that uh, is not expert in pneumatics. But the reaction is, uh, oh, uh, ah, okay, ah, let me let me understand better. So th this is our role. You are expert. You have to uh, diffuse the knowledge. Yes. And people are young people or experienced people that you can find in the industrial sector uh, is very, very um, expert uh, in, in, uh, in find the best solution. So um, maintenance or energy manager speak about uh, um, uh, his... Um, uh, let me let me say they they understand very easy and very quickly if someone um, is uh, speaking about something interesting or not for for them, and if they don't understand or if they don't know that th there is a solution for this problem, they open immediately the doors and start to understand better what are you doing and what are tell you to them so we we have only a way start to communicate so you do this with the, your programs with the, your your ideas and i think that is the only way to 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 do the 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 real transition to the future for pneumatics starting to speak about that thank you matteo this is great so i would like just to remind that our air movement is for curious smart people as Matteo mentioned that want to discover uh, new efficient technologies connect with new experts so please uh, join our platform join our movement and uh, workshops uh, I would like to tell that today was only an introduction to to Matteo because you have many interesting technologies products that you've been developing so we will organize a series of workshops with you with, with your colleagues from Safin and um, so let's keep in touch and make a pneumatic energy conscious. Thank you so much, Matteo. Ciao, Elvira. See you soon.